This sixth video shows you how to carry forward answers from a previous question, which can be really useful for follow-up questions. The sixth video will also show you how to use display logic for individual response options, not whole questions, and how to use what is called piped text, which allows you to do many things within Qualtrics. We'll also come back to this idea in the next video. We're going to use some questions around help seeking to explain some things in this video, including how to use the scores from the PGSI that we set up in the last video to determine who sees these help seeking questions. I'm also going to show you how to ask a question like where have you sought help and then carry whatever selections they've made in that question forward to the next question. I'll also show you how to add in an option of other and please specify and allow people to have a text box there to enter in another option that you might not have thought of and show you how to bring that information, whatever they've typed there, into this next question as well. Let's get going. So I need to add a new block. I'll name my block Help Seeking and I'll add a new question in here. There are going to be three questions that we add. One of them is Ever Sought Help, so I'll call this Ever Help. That's, that works for me. I try and keep my variable names really short. All right, so I'll get my question text here and copy that over into the question box. And in this case, it hasn't decided to get smart with the answers. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll make my answers, now I've typed yes, it tries to get smart. So I'll make my answers yes and no. I'll make sure I turn on forced response here. And that question's pretty much ready to go. Now, my next question here is, where have you sought help? So please select all that apply. So this is another one of those select all that apply options. I'll call this where help. Okay, so now I need to put in my response options. And just like the matrix tables, I can actually copy these across. It is gonna bring over a little bit of the formatting that I don't want so I can tidy them up, but it can save me having to type it all out from scratch. So there we go, just get rid of that, go down to the next one, get rid of the dashes, these sorts of things. But it saved me having to type all that out, which means that it's saved having uh, bringing in typos as well. Now for this other please specify option, I want them to be able to enter some text if they've selected that option. And I can do that using this little blue arrow next to it and say allow text entry. And now I've got a text box. I, now that I've got the text box set up, I can go back in and I can change the size of the text box or what I'll accept. So um, I could make it so that it needs to be numerical if that made sense, for example. Um, you know, validation can still apply to these text boxes here. This is also a select all that apply question. So I need to make this multiple answer and I'll make it forced response as well. Now, in this case, I haven't given people a prefer not to say option. I could if I wanted to, um, but I also haven't given them the option to say I have not sought help because this question is only going to be shown to people who said yes to this. So I need to set that up. I need to set up some display logic here. So this question is only shown if ever help was yes. That is if they've ever selected uh, the people who selected yes for help. So I'm using this question here to determine if they should see this one. And now I'm gonna ask one more question here, which is which of these was the best source of help? So because people can answer multiple options here, I want to see which one is actually the best one. So I'll call this best help. What I can do, which is a really powerful tool, is I can carry forward whatever choices they selected in the last question. It could be a different question that I want to carry forward as well. I can select from anywhere in the survey, basically. So now I'm carrying forward these options from the question above. Doing so is great, but it can also be a little bit limiting because it doesn't let me actually modify them because it's drawing on what's in the other question. And here, other please specify is probably not that useful. So that's one way of carrying things through but it doesn't quite work in this situation because I have that other please specify thing. So I'm gonna turn off this uh, carrying forward options and I'll just click there and remove. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type these options out again, um, just copy them over from the questionnaire, but I'm gonna do something special for other. And I'm also gonna set it up so that each option is only shown if they selected it in the previous question. So I'll show you how you do that. 
So see here, friends, right? I only want this to be shown if they selected friends above. So I can click on this blue arrow here and use add display logic. And that will only be selected if in the where did you see seek help question, they selected friends. And then I can do that for family as well. So that family is only shown if in that question where help they selected family and so on. So you see, we get this blue arrow here, which means that there's some display logic. I'm not gonna set up all of these. I'm just gonna set up these first two. You can see what would happen with the rest. But other is an interesting one. There's no point piping through text that says other please specify because they've actually told us what that other thing is. So I'm gonna do a thing here called piped text. Click on this arrow, click on insert pipe text and you'll see that there's a lot of options here. I can bring in text from all different places of the survey. Uh, so I could insert the current date and time, for example, if I wanted to. Um, I could insert the scores from that PGSI question that we've done. Um, I could bring in their location based on their um, IP. But in this case, I want to bring in whatever they said in that text box for other. So this is from a survey question. I go down to where help um, and I go to other please specify and text entry. So this will say whatever text they've entered. And you can see here, I'll zoom in for you. This is what it looks like. There is a little queue here, which is just a um, an address. Then I've got a question number here and it's the text entry value to do with option six. And you'll see that it's also wrapped with a dollar sign and curly brackets. And that is the symbol in Qualtrics to let it know that there's something happening here, that there's an address to follow, or there could be some maths to follow. We can do some maths behind the scenes if needs be as well. So that's gonna, instead of saying other please specify, this is gonna pipe through whatever they've said in this box, exactly as they've said it. And I also need to make it with display logic. So this only appears if in that question, they selected other, or I could make it if text entry is not empty, if they've actually typed something in text entry, for example, either of those will do. Okay, so I've set up this question here so that it's all ready to go. The last thing I need to do is add some display logic here to say that if people haven't sought help, then they shouldn't be seeing this question. So yes, I've uh, sought help. I should be seeing this question. Now we can see the display option can work on a question basis and also on an item basis and also the really powerful thing that is piping through text. Now you can pipe through all sorts of text and learn a lot about pipe text because that is going to make some of your surveys incredibly useful. Display logic working on a question basis and on a item basis, but what about a block basis? In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do that in survey flow. We're only going to ask this help seeking block of people who score a certain score on the PGSI. I'll see you there.